Welcome to the Inner Circle, where we explore behind the scenes of Inner Space concerts. Who are the performers, the supporters, and the people of classical music? Welcome to the debut episode of Inner Circle, the people of classical music. I'm your hostess, Caitlin Wheaton. For 25 years, flamenco dancer Martin Derrier Kopp traveled to Spain to the birthplace to study the art of gypsy flamenco. Tune in to find out what exactly is the art of flamenco and what Ensemble en Rouge has in store for their Inner Space Concerts debut on October 13th. Many of us train in Spain every year. We've been doing this as a group for, for about 10 years. Uh, Shaba is our latest addition. He's I'm been new since last year. Since last started. year. He's yeah. joined us as our previous percussionist, went back to England. Um, and we perform a traditional gypsy flamenco style, mm -hmm. a very pure gitano gypsy style. And you were going to say, Shaba, you're from Hungary. So I was born in Hungary where quite a few. Gitanos, Gitanos, Gypsies, or uh, it's, it's a fairly strong influence in Hungary, actually, in music. There's uh, Gypsy music as such. Oh, wow. So the style that we're trying to uh, play here is very, kind of very similar and kind of hit home as well. Exactly. So it's it's a pure Gypsy style. I've been going to Jerez de la Frontera, which is the the capital of, of gypsy flamenco for oh my goodness for you know 25 years and that is the place that has that pure authentic the best maestros and maestras the best flamenco in the world as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. That's wonderful. Could you tell us a little bit more about the culture and the history behind the flamenco music? Well, of course. So flamenco is a um, we like to say it's like a potaje, it's, it's a mixture of different elements. So originally the Gitanos came from India, they stopped in Hungary, Romania, settled through there, Europe, through yeah, Europe, yeah. and they settled in yeah. Spain. And uh, flamenco, the Gitanos were an oppressed people, so we, we kind of relate to some of the themes of, of you know, uh, Black Lives Matter and, you know, indigenous rights and so on. They were always oppressed, they were outcasts, they, they had to live outside the cities in their caravans. And, um, you know, they, they worked through, you know, marginalized jobs um, to feed their families. And this is their music, it's, it's like the blues, it's, it's the music of a, of a highly oppressed people, but they expressed, through the music and dance, their, their emotions. So the emotions were anger, the way, you know, their lives, the sadness, sorrow, grief, some of them worked in the mines, they lost their lives, uh, but also there is, there is a bittersweet joy, and you're going to see that in the show. We, we try to provide you with a mix of the different styles. Yeah. You'll be seeing the, the deep anguish, but you will also be, see, you'll also be seeing some of the, for example, the alegrias. It's, it's, it, it means joy, but it's tinged with sadness. No mm. sour. There's notes where, you know, you, in, in the happiness, you kind of remember your, your circumstances. Yeah. So that is, that is flamenco. It's a very complex, beautiful, beautiful style. It takes over your life. It's taken over my life. I think it's <laughs> taken over Shava's life and, and the rest of our group. So there are six of us. Mm -hmm. um, there is a wonderful guitarist. Um, he's our musical director, Matthew Martin. Our extraordinary cantaora, Brenly Hebert. Uh, she's the voice of flamenco. She will also act as the host for the evening and, and tell you about what you're seeing, what you're, what you're hearing, and, and what it means. Because it's obviously going to be in Spanish when it's sung. Yeah. So she will translate, she will interpret. Um, Shaba, of course, is our percussionist, and there are three of us dancers. So you're going to get a very colorful, um, you know, sort of event. And plus, to, it's sort of in homage to the Inner Space series, 
um, there will be classical Spanish guitar as mm -hmm. well. So Matthew Martin has prepared an amazingly beautiful program of Albenis, Granados, De Falla, and we're going to give you the, the classical Spanish, but we're going to also interject in there, intersperse some flamenco. Yeah, that's so interesting. The, I think a lot of people are interested in learning the culture and history behind it because a lot of times it's not talked about, so that's I right. appreciate you sharing that. and. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting, different concert for us. We've never I had them so. in your right. space, so we're all excited. Well, I mean, it's it's not going to be the quiet chamber yeah. music, that's for sure. Though some of the guitar will be, you know, beautiful lyrical pieces, of course. But we're also going to sort of give you some of the fiery flamenco as yeah. well, with the footwork, the castanets, the shawls. So, uh, sort of a, a visually dazzling. We're colorful. Yes. <laughs> So how did you both learn the flamenco music? How long did it take you to train this? Well, here's a connection. Um, several of us are classically trained in music. I have a master's in musicology myself from Université de Montréal, and our, our guitarist, Matthew Martin, is a, is a European trained a graduate of Acadia in classical guitar, um, has um, several degrees from European universities as well. So he's a classical guitarist. Shaba is classically trained in Hungary? Piano. Well, I, I went to actually two jazz colleges, and one of them was in Budapest, mm -hmm. and uh, the piano was always my second instrument, and then I, I started taking the RCM here in Canada, actually wanted to know more about it. So it was very classical, obviously. And I had another jazz college uh, in Australia mm -hmm. as well, I went to. So, And plus where I was born, Hungary, as I was saying. Before, the, you're living there, so you're here. That kind of music. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. quite a yeah. sort of a dynamic yeah. musical center. Yeah. So some of us already bring that classical music connection. Um, I was attracted to flamenco because of its extraordinary musical complexity. Mm. It is, um, it's like you know blues or jazz. It's its own language, but it's not a simple language. It's a very, very, very complex language. For example, we you know count on twelve. like patterns of 12 starting on 12, mm -hmm. patterns of, of sixes, patterns of threes, patterns of eight. So these all have to be learned because they're, they're transmitted orally, like blues. You're not going to find a lot of flamenco scores. That's really you have to learn it from your passed teacher. On. It's passed on. It's a beautiful oral tradition. That's why we go to study in Spain. And, um, and it has to be sort of perfected. It's also quite codified as a musical form. There are things you do and things you don't do, and they will tell you very clearly, you know, if you're doing something which is um, sort of not authentic or not authentic. So it's both uh, improvisational and it's codified. So you improvise within very set musical forms and patterns, mm -hmm. right? That's right, and uh, as you said, the improvisation is a big part of it also. And for me, particularly because I love you know, I went to, I love jazz music, for example, mm -hmm. and there's lots of improvisation in that. Almost. Yeah, there's a connection uh, there. Uh, so yeah. There's some connection there. And of course, uh, on the cajon, is, there's some space for that kind of yeah. movement, you know, mm -hmm. improvising um, as you feel the music. Besides, yeah. it's very sad. That's yeah. What yeah. was saying, 12, 3. Seven, Six, eight, eight ten, ten yeah. you know, so it's, accents it's, yeah, shift, but accents. you have to be together and you have to know what you're doing and you have to communicate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether you'll see at the show there is extraordinary communication. Um, we look at each other, we give each other visual clues. There is there are codes as well for when we do certain things, when we close, when we punctuate. There's a lot of communication among musicians, and people are gonna say, like, why are they all shouting at each other? <laughs> because we're also Part of the performance is for ourselves as mm -hmm. a group, and we do this, uh, and we encourage each other, and we applaud what the, what the performer is doing at the time. So we might give a haleo, which is a shout to the guitarist. Oh, ole, que me gusta, que bonito. Agua. Agua, water. It's just so hot that we need water. <laughs> or, you know, azúcar, sugar. It's so okay. sweet. So we will communicate with each other verbally as well, mm -hmm. in addition to musically. Yeah, that's wonderful. And we saw a little bit of that when you played for our season launch. Yeah. Yes. So it's interesting to see the background of that now because, yeah, I noticed you guys were communicating yes. quite a bit. So now it all yeah. kind of 
ties together of why you were doing that. Yes, chemistry is huge. Yeah. Oh, it, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, we're all friends. We're we're close. Um, you know, we've been part of each other's lives for so long, and that chemistry is also what elevates you. You know, when you're on stage, you feel so extraordinarily supported by your compañeros, mm -hmm. and that sort of pushes you to, and, and you communicate with the audience. I mean, it's very important for me to see people's faces and to see that they're receiving something. Mm -hmm. they're, they're hearing it, they're, they're, they're relating, they're appreciating, and it, and it has meaning for them. Yeah. So the audience is also encouraged to give us haleos if they want, you know, the ole, the toma. That's more azucar for us, sugar. You know, yeah. Right? <laughs> Makes it more Energizes sweet. you it's guys. More sweet. Sweet. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's wonderful. And you mentioned briefly the costume aspect. Could you tell us a little bit more about the ideas behind the costumes and yeah. the importance of that of in flamenco music? Of course. So there, there is an aesthetic. I don't go to work like this every day. <laughs> this is the way we dress on stage. The aesthetic of the the costume, the flecos. Um, the, the flowers, very, very important for flamenco dancers. Um, we always have flowers in our hair, the big earrings, the makeup. Uh, there is an aesthetic to it. It's a code of dress to honor and respect the tradition. Mm -hmm. But it's also something that you know, audiences really relate to. It, it, there's, there's a beauty not only to the movements, but also to the colors and the way the flecos will move with me. Mm -hmm. These are like, what do you call them, flecos? They're fringes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so they, you know, they move with the dancer. We, we use um, abanicos, shawls. We use, uh, sorry, fans. We use mantones that are shawls. So there, there is a visual aesthetic as well that is part of the performance, which I think is, is really very enriching. Yeah. yeah. The gypsy is very, very, the way they dress is very, very colorful. Colorful. Mm -hmm. The more colorful, the better. And the more Flecos. flowers, and play, all, all <laughs> that, bracelets, and you know, all yeah. so, earrings. So it, it adds a dimension that, you know, you, you may not have with um, other forms of music and dance, but it certainly is part of the aesthetic. And, you know, we honor that. Our group, we always put some rosemary in our hair. Mm. Rosemary is like she brought some, is the herb of the Gitanos. It's, it's considered good luck, it's considered sacred. So you'll notice all the dancers have some romero in their hair. The, the musicians will have it in their pocket. It, it brings luck. I was told by once by a teacher, you can't dance well if you don't have some romero on you. Mm, I took that very seriously. <laughs> and you know, the gypsies are always trying to sell you romero in the street. That's, and and they, they give you romero, which means remembrance and they want to read your fortune. Mm -hmm. And you always, always accept and always give them something because it's, it's considered good luck. Mm -hmm. So that is another part of the tradition. So you can look for the rosemary when we perform, yeah. and you can look for all of these other visual accoutrements. <laughs> we'll yeah. have to dress you up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We'll I feel left out. I should have worn no, red today. <laughs> we, we'll bring you some... We'll, oh, thank you. <laughs> we'll bring you some flowers and earrings. It would be fun, actually, if you yeah. also took part in that. So, did you choose red for a specific reason for your ensemble, or is there any significance to the color red? Well, it, it is really the color par excellence. I'm French, so rouge for me, and you know, the, the original, one of the original dancers was also French, and we said that, that's a great little connection that brings our French heritage with the, and that's how we stayed with Flamenco en rouge over the years, and you know, as we performed, we became well known, even though there were more than francophones in the group. <laughs> Um, it's also the color of flamenco, I mean, that's why, it, you mm -hmm. know, it's our favorite color. You see at the end we come out in a, in a big ensemble dance, all the dances will be in red. It's just visually dazzling, it's the color of love, it's the color of passion, mm -hmm. and there it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's wonderful, it really sticks out and, yeah, it has that fire behind it. You can't miss us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's great. Well, is there anything else you want to share about your concert coming up on October 13th? We're very excited. We're very yeah. appreciative of Jack Chen and Inner Space to be presenting us at a time of COVID. Mm -hmm. We haven't performed since November. We've had uh, shows in Ottawa, Moncton, obviously Halifax, Edmonton cancelled. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, for artists, we've been very, very hard hit by COVID. We and just had a concert this weekend. 
uh, or next weekend at um, Celtic Colors or something. Yeah, we had a we were supposed to be presented by Celtic Colors in in, um, in Where Sydney. Was it? Sydney. Or in somewhere. Sydney, so that was cancelled as well. So we're very grateful that you're presenting us because it means a lot for us to be able to share what we do. It, it's hard to continue to stay motivated practicing in our basements and together, of course we come together, we've been practicing throughout, mm -hmm. but having a, a live performance, and I realize people will be also watching online, but it means a lot to us, so we're very, very grateful. We're, we know it's a big risk for you to be doing this as well. Uh, Jack is like extraordinary. Um, he has a wonderful vision and he's just so delightful to work with. And if we I have gone to many of the inner, <laughs> inner space concerts, so I know the series, I think it's a beautiful idea uh, anyway to you know, have these intimate, uh, I've heard piano and clarinet and, and of course flute, um, and so thank you, we're, we're, we can't wait to do what we do for you, and we promise you a, a very dynamic show. Yes, yes. And thank you for taking part, I know everyone's quite excited to hear something different and new mm -hmm. that hasn't been done before, so we're really looking forward to having you. Thank you, Caitlin. We look forward to it. Thank you. So you can still get gracias. tickets for... Yeah, yes. gracias. Yeah, muchas gracias. <laughs> you can still get tickets for October 13th's concert, Flamenco Rouge. Uh, just go to our website for that, and yeah, thank you so much again, guys, for joining me today, and we look forward to your concert. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hasta pronto. Olé. Olé. <laughs>